Hey everybody, Sam here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm continuing to work on my workshop, although from the appearances, it is looking less and less like a workshop and more like a house. Let's jump into today's video where we end up with this, what you see behind me. In today's video, I'm gonna work on house wrapping and then installing my wooden siding on the building. So let's go ahead and jump over to the outside and start working. I have a nine foot roll of woven house wrap. It's a water resistive barrier. I'm gonna try and put this up there by myself. This is a nine foot by 150 foot roll. It's got a little bit of mass to it, but my biggest concern about doing this by myself is pulling it out, stapling it, keeping it tight, keeping it straight, and just keeping it looking pretty nice. I don't want it to look like I just stapled a grocery bag on my building, so we'll see how far I go. If it ends up being a mess, falling apart, I will stop and I'll wait for help, but for right now, we'll give it a shot. I finished installing the house wrap on this long wall. What I want to do now is go ahead and start putting my siding on here so that any strong winds don't come by and just tear it off. In preparation of this step, I measured the other day the point where I want the bottom of my siding to be, put a couple of pencil marks on my floor joist, and I just finished installing a two x four right there, flush with the top of that pencil line, which will act as a ledger or a holder of place so I can put the panel up on the wall sit on top of the 2x4, I know my bottom reveal is exactly where I want it, and then focus on getting it aligned and making the wall straight with my first piece and keeping everything in line with the studs.
All right, let's go climb through a window. We've successfully broken into the shop now. We're gonna use the Sawzall, cut ourselves a doorway opening so we can quit burglarizing ourselves. Ta-da! All my doorways and windows are done. I just carried over my gable end truss, and even though this thing is 20 feet wide, it is not super heavy. So I just lifted the gable truss into place. Now I'm gonna attach some of these guys. These are some two by six scraps that I cut, and I attached a piece of my siding to it. That way I can put this up on the outside of the wall, attach this into the studs, let the truss hit against this, and then we can attach it down and keep everything nice and plumb. Well, this truss was not very easy to put in place, but it is here, and I no doubt will get better as I go along, and I'll learn more tricks, and hopefully it will be easier. These two worked great. So now it's a matter of rinse and repeat, going all the way up and over to the other end, putting these on two foot centers. In the spirit of trying new things, why not? We are already forging ahead, breaking some ice on things I've never done before, so why not change it up just as soon as I think I may have a system in place. I just brought over three of my common trusses, flipped them up, set them up, and leaned them against what I already had in place. What I'm now gonna try is getting a handful of two by fours, full lengths. 
attaching them to the underside or rather the inside of the existing truss that was already mounted and then pulling these out and attaching them to my two by fours kind of going from the back there to right here if any of this makes sense it'd be surprising guys that worked fantastic it was easy to do it was a lot less up and down and i just did the scaffold dance that's pretty much it having that scaffolding is worth its weight in gold it's painted yellow but in my book that baby's solid gold you obviously saw how much that saved me from going up and down, up and down, moving a ladder. It gave me a much larger platform to work from. It was much safer. I was able to have all my tools and equipment up there and just move it around however I needed to. Very, very nice. At this point, I only have seven left to do. So let me go ahead and fill in the rest of these, the ones that are actually purely identical to what you've already seen. And I'll see you guys when we get over here to this gable end, when we do the creative work there. I wanna show you a thing that you need to do so you don't forget, show you that. And then we'll build our last ladder rake, I believe it's what it is. The two by four boards that hang over the drop truss on the end and then form out my eave. And then we will have made a huge milestone and great accomplishment in the workshop today. All right, guys, I am down to this last step and I only have four more trusses to do. Now, what I wanted to talk about that I mentioned earlier is how to handle the ends. You wanna make sure that you get at least your last two, possibly three trusses up and lean it against your gable end truss before you finish out filling. Otherwise, you gotta figure out how to lift your truss in upright all the way up to the top and that might be difficult. So let's go ahead and flip these upright, lean them against my gable truss. Then we'll get up here and keep doing the same thing. But really, four more to do, pretty cool. I think it's very important to know our own personal limitations. Everything up until this point, I've done myself. Grading, foundation, floor framing, building the floor, framing the walls, putting on the sheathing, OSB siding, and even doing all of the roof framing. All of that stuff, I knew I could do no problem. When it came time to do the roof sheathing, I already bought it, and I was always thinking, okay, maybe this will be the time. Maybe this will be the one. But after doing my current workshop, which was a couple years back now at this point, but after doing that project and seeing how it turned out and then having this new workshop project which is a lot more complicated and i really really wanted it to look good i decided you know what just get a quote see how much it would be for a local roof crew to do that part for you how much is it going to be if it's outrageous then yeah there's your sign do it yourself 
If it's affordable, then there's your sign. Don't do it yourself. I'm happy to say that it was very affordable. The entire quote job for this entire roof to sheath it out was right at $430. But even cooler, and probably not in this video, or maybe, I don't know, is the fact that they are also going to be installing the metal roof for me for a grand total of 800 bucks for labor. That to me is a heck of a deal. Paying a crew $800 to do the work themselves, to have it done professionally, to make it look great and correct, and this guy not have to risk getting me up on a roof, slipping and falling. Yeah, I definitely paid it. Since I hired a crew to do this job, I don't have any footage of them installing it. So I will have to be a little bit of a letdown on how to install stuff and kind of that process. Basically, they put the panels up there. It is 7 16 inch OSB. They nailed it to the roof trusses, staggered their joints overlay. When it was done, then they taped it and that was it. All right, that's enough yakky to yak. Let's do a run and gun, go in this building and see what it looks like inside. Well, first things first, there is an echo. It is a little bit darker, but it looks awesome. So looking at things in here, it looks really good. You're able to see the joints between the panels, which is by design. You have the metal little H clips that space the OSB panels apart from each other as designed. And then you can see the little yellow lights. It looks like a yellow light. That is the light coming through the tape and into the building. Very, very nice. As I also look at the overall job, the quality of the work, I'm looking for nails that have been missed on the trusses, anything kind of blown out, any kind of really big gaps. And honestly, I see none of that. I can honestly say that probably would not have been the case if this guy installed that roof. So that is yet again, another reason to know your own limitations, know when it is time to learn a new skill and when it's time to pay for that skill. And I'm glad that I paid. All right, guys, just got the tractor set up over here and I have my man cage. I don't know what it's called. It's a work platform. Got it set up. Now I'm gonna grab my ladder, set it over here in front of this, climb up the ladder and climb in the work cage. It's kind of what I do when I'm by myself, but hey, it's a lot better than doing all this work just from the ladder. Just roll out your tape. Give yourself about two, two and a half inches overlap on the right side and on the left. And then using a utility knife, just slice and cut your flashing tape. What I then like to do is fold it in half before I peel off the backing and give myself a crease. That way, when I go to install it, I can line this crease up with the middle of my window. Usually there's a cripple stud right there. And I know as long as I line it up here, I won't be shortchanging myself on the outside edges. Now is when I line up my piece right here on the outside of the window. The number one thing you wanna try and do is split it in the middle height-wise. So half is under window sill, half is on your exterior siding or your sheathing, depending on how you're building your structure. Once you have it in place, go ahead and press it down firmly, rubbing it and attaching it to your siding or your sheathing. Using your utility knife, go to your edges and cut down right where it overlaps and then lay this piece inside to your window seal. I like to start in the center, pulling a piece right there and then work my way over Trying to make sure we have a firm seal, no large air bubbles or any kind of folds. I also will use the hand over here to hold the tape up, but also apply pressure that way to kind of stretch the flashing tape and get a better seal. 
You do the same thing with the sides. Put your tape where it half overlaps on your wall, half sticks into your wall or window opening. Press it down very firmly to your siding and then using a utility knife, cut a slit at the bottom and the top of your opening and then fold it in on the window framing. Okay, the flashing is installed on the bottom, the left side, and the right side. What I'm going to do next, since I know my windows fit, I've already test fit and installed two others, I know my window will fit, I'm gonna go ahead and install a bead of Lexel clear sealant around the perimeter on the wall, right on the window frame wall here where the window flange will attach. Put a big old bead there, then I'll lift my window up into place, hold it level, and begin attaching it with the screws. Depending upon your window opening, your window itself, what kind of conditions you're working with, whether it be new construction, old construction, or retrofit. You might have to shim your window. You might need to do some finagling to get it level and a lot more things than what I'm going to have to do with my construction. Mine's fairly easy because I just built all of this out. Everything is built square and level, so it truly is a perfect case scenario. There? Uh-huh. All right, the screws I'm using are GRK cabinet screws. These are number eight screws, two inch long. These are corrosion resistant. The most important thing is they are flat pan heads. Very good screws to use for window install. As far as attaching the window into the opening, I've got four screws holding it in place right now. Now I'm just gonna work myself around in a circular fashion, filling in all of the nail flange holes on this window. It takes a lot for a three foot by four foot window such as this one, but it's worth it. Do every single one. And there we go. The window is completely attached with screws. The last step for this install is to put my flashing tape at the very top. The last piece of flashing, you want it to go on top of your window, over top of your screws, like that. Push it down over top of your screws and then fold it up onto your wall, creating a large water shield plane that if water gets up here, it hits the flashing, it goes over your screws, over your flange, hits your window's trim or trough and goes on down and does not go into the wall. All right guys, it's the next day and I'm up here at our windows again and I'm gonna be working on installing this, the exterior window trim. This is some stuff I picked up from a local hardware store. It is three quarters of an inch thick, three and a half inches wide and solid PVC or a PVC core. This is designed to be used in exterior applications. It will never rot, it will never ruin, and it's pretty good to use. So there are basically two different ways I've seen most people trim out windows, at least with this kind of application. And I've done a Leonardo da Vinci sketch for you guys to really ooh and ah over here. The first trim style that I've seen used is where you cut your top and bottom trim boards to be the exact same length or width in their application as it's put on the building. And then you fill in your left and right styles with whatever length or height is of your window. I don't like this method because as water falls from top to bottom, it can rest and then find its way into your bottom board with that joint being there. And even though we did window flashing, window sealant and everything of the sort, water should not cause any problems if it gets back there. I just don't like inviting it into the window area that much. So what I like to do is option number two, that is where the bottom trim board is the narrowest piece of all of them. The left and right sides actually fall down below it. That way there is no horizontal shelf or joint for water to hit, rest on, and go into your building. It's just a vertical plane that goes on down to the ground. And then the top board is the same as being full width to cover everything to act as a roof of sorts for your trim. As far as measuring and cutting this stuff, I like to do it right here in the field, right at my window. I measure the width of the actual protrusion of the casing. I then add a little bit of wiggle room to that measurement, something around a 16th of an inch. Go ahead and cut my bottom, my left and right sides, and then my top. Knowing that my material is three and a half inches wide, that means the left and right side 
are three and a half inches longer than the window itself measures out. And then the top board is seven inches wider than the window's width because you take into account the window plus your right and your left trim board. As far as attaching the boards to my structure, I'm using some GRK white trim screws. These have super tiny, tiny little heads, if you can even say that these screws have heads, and they countersink in and go into place very easily. Sometimes if you drive them too far, you may have to come back with a little bit of exterior sealant to fill it in, but otherwise, if you go slow and work your way into it, you can get these guys flush, and they pretty much disappear, especially on a structure like this when you see it from a distance. The number one headache that you'll run into with this kind of application where I have the window installed and my finished siding also installed is that the window sticks out farther than anything else on this building is going to. That means that my trim is actually going to be tapered back from the window side to the siding side and it doesn't give me as pretty of joints and smooth corners at my junctions as it could be. Sure I could cut some shims, try and build it out, but honestly this is just trim, this is a workshop, and I'm not going to go to that length for this installation. Just know that what you see as far as a little bit of eh gaps surely could be filled in with some exterior grade caulk and paint, or just left as is, or if you're more picky than I am, you can go ahead and get some shims, work really hard on getting it set in just right, but then don't forget to seal in all your back side of your trims with some sealant so that you keep weather and bugs out as well. All right, my trim boards are installed while I'm up here. I'm gonna use my knife and go ahead and trim the excess window flashing just so that it's out of the way because otherwise, after time, it will shrink up, it'll look weird, and it just looks odd to have a big black strip on your building. If you have any extra on your left and right, now would be the time to trim it as well. But thankfully, my trim covers it, so I'm all done. I was just informed that I'm not done. It's just on the far side of the trim. I couldn't see it. Okay, am I done now? Yes. All right guys, now I'm done. Today's video is all about siding. And while you guys have already seen the majority of the wall siding being put up, this video is about the nitty gritty siding that is not so easy to do, but is still totally required. Guys, I'm up here as tall as my tractor will lift me up in this work basket. And I have my materials for house wrapping the gable end of the building. With our Z-Wire flashing installed and our first piece of siding cut, now we just sit it up here into place, making sure that our seams and our joints line up correctly. We also have good looking reveals and we just attach it with screws.
down here on this end of the workshop, you can tell that OSHA regulations were thrown out the window. I had to pull out all creative ideas to get up there to the very top of the peak as safely as I could to install the pieces, and thank goodness it all worked out great. Yet again in this video was another example of the tractor with the work basket being so invaluable. This is one of the best things I've ever bought. It gives me a secure place to work from, it gives me a place to hold some tools, some materials, and it saves me from a lot of up, down, up, down on the ladder, moving things around, and allows me to be much safer. Let's move quick before it falls over. I have one trim screw pinned right over here just to keep it from falling out in case I bump into it and as I work. But I need to show you guys something. And it's one of those things that I debated to show it or not, but I don't think I could hide it. And it's a good example of, I'm a human, I make mistakes. So take a look at this. As we pan up and you guys see the door and the casing and we get up here to the top, it looks as if the door is Oh, an inch and a half too short. Yeah, do you know what I did wrong? Whenever I built this wall and I built this door opening, I took my rough door framing height, but I forgot that I was going to cut and remove my bottom plate of the wall, therefore making the door an inch and a half shorter than how I ended up framing the wall. So, this is a good example of just stuff happens, <laughs> mistakes happen, and so what I'm gonna show you now is how I'm going to fix it. First up, what I'll do is cut a piece of two by four to 38 inches, which is our width of our rough opening. Go ahead and attach it and screw it to the bottom of my door header and fill in the space. Put the framing back where it should have been to begin with. Then I'll continue with the door installation as usual inside here. What this will mean though, is I will have to do a little bit of flashing, trim, or something outside to seal it up, but that's okay. I have the stuff to work around, I can get it done, and it's a good way to show you guys how to work around something, but also em emphasize the importance of when you're framing, just double check and think about all your openings before you cut them, or, well, I don't know, build it to begin with. Either way, a little bit of reality, wanted to share it, and now let's get to fixing it and installing the door. Sorry about the noise, guys. I have a fan on in here because it is quite toasty. So I have the door closed right now, and now I'm gonna go through everyone's favorite game called shim the door until the frame is square and lines are parallel all around. So, the, the basic name of this game is add some shims until the frame and the door are sitting in here squarely, all of the lines are parallel, and your reveal or your gap around your door the entire way is the same. Using the shims and my small little trim screws, I have everything held in place. It has a perfect reveal or the gap between the door and the molding or the casing is exactly the same all the way around. So that's what's meant by reveal. It opens and closed nice and smooth. There's no rubbing, no abrasions. So what I'm gonna do is go outside using the same little trim screws, go ahead and tack in my outside molding to the wall of the workshop from the outside. Then I'll come back in here and I'll get some long three inch long screws and attach them in through the hinges to really lock everything down super tight. Now that everything is done, I can trim these shims off. Simple as using a utility blade, scoring it once, breaking it off. Go to the next one, score, break, and the last one, score it and break it. These are composite or plastic shims and they're very easy to work with. Last but not least, you'll notice on your door, every hinge is missing a screw. They give you some screws to go with it, but I'm gonna use some of these long ones that I have, three inch long screws, drive them in, and this attaches your hinge to your door frame and your door frame to your wall framing.
there we have it guys the door is installed in the workshop this place is a lot more secure now but even more importantly it looks nice this guy's looking official very nice I gotta say it is looking really good and we are so close to being done with the exterior build of the workshop remember there is a link to a full playlist down below in case you plopped and dropped just on this one that playlist will show you everything that we've done here everything from breaking ground to building everything you see plus take you on to the future for the full completion fit out finish and use of this new space for my small business if you've got any questions or comments leave one down below otherwise take care and i'll see you guys next time working on the workshop